Stuka Joe here. Today we will be playing one full turn of Brotherhood and Unity. War in Bosnia and Herzegovina 1992 to 1995. This is a game designed by Tomislav Cipcic and published by Compass Games. This is a three player game. One player controls the Serbians, another the Croatians, and the third player controls the Bosniak forces inside Bosnia Herzegovina. We have the game set up and we will be following the game's tutorial and I have included a link to the PDF in the description below in case you want to follow along. But before we go on with the tutorial, let's take a look at the victory conditions in this game. There are three ways to win. If at any time any player reaches his side's victory conditions and the player controls all of the side's key areas, that player immediately wins. And what is each player's victory conditions? For the Serbians, it, it is reaching 71 strategic will points. For the Croatians, 60. And for the Bosniaks, 55. Now, if that doesn't happen, but any of the players reaches a strategic will score of 0 or a foreign attitude score of minus 7, that player immediately surrenders and we calculate the victory score for the remaining two players with victory going to the highest score. Now, if none of these two situations happen and we played the last turn of the game, we calculate the victory score for each of the three players with the highest scoring player winning the game. And the way the victory score is calculated is we take the initial factor, which is 0 for the Serbs, 11 for the Croats, and 16 for the Bosniaks, and we add the strategic will value of all areas under a player's control. We subtract the strategic will value of all non-controlled key regions for that player, and then we subtract 5 times the intervention level. Now let's take a look at an example with the Bosniaks. In this example, the Bosniak player has a strategic will score of 40, but doesn't control the Bosniak key region of Podrinje, which is worth 5 strategic will points and is at intervention level 2. So we start with 16, the initial factor for the Bosniaks, plus 40 for the strategic will points controlled by the Bosniaks, minus 5 because the Bosniaks don't control their key region of Podrinje, and minus 10 because the Bosniak intervention level is at 2, for a total of 41 victory points. So we start the game with the start of turn phase, and the first phase is draw cards. And how many cards are drawn? Well, we check out the turn track on the map board, and we will see small cards and numbers next to them. This is the number of cards that each player receives. So the Serbian player will draw seven cards, the Croat player will draw five, and the Bosniak five as well. Let's take a look at the Serbian cards drawn. Slavo Lisica, Posavina Corridor Offensive, VRS Limited Offensive, Serbian Intervention, Declaration of Republika Srpska, VRS redeployment effort, and rapid advance. Let's take a look at the five Croat cards drawn. Croatian intervention, HVO takedown, declaration of Herceg Bosna, counterattack, and HVO redeployment effort. And the five cards drawn by the Bosniaks are no Step Back, Sarajevo City Hall, Bosniak Refugee Crisis, International Recognition of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and UN Safe Areas Established. As we can see, the Serbians received two more cards in the first turn, so we can expect that they will be doing more damage in this turn. Their cards are aggressive, and that reflects their high state of preparedness for war, and the amount of military personnel and equipment left to them by the Yugoslav People's Army. 
On the other side of the spectrum, the Bosniaks start with a major handicap, that is, they have a minus two die roll modifier in attack and defense situations, and also their hand reflects a very defensive attitude. The next step is to place reinforcements, and reinforcements are placed in the order of play, which is visible on the turn record track. In turns one and two, order of play is Serbian, Croat, and then Bosniak. And in turns three and four, it changes to Bosniak, Croat, and finally Serbian. So the Serbian side goes first and takes its reinforcements from the counter supply. Now, how many units are taken? That is visible in the turn track as well as small NATO symbols for infantry. The Serbians get 10 units, and these are standard infantry brigades with NATO infantry symbols. And these are placed on key spaces or spaces adjacent to key spaces. And reinforcements are always standard infantry brigades, but in this game there are also mechanized brigades, but these are placed on the map only by using special elite brigade cards. Let's take a look at the Serbian reinforcements. The Serbians placed three units in the region of Semberia, one in Svornik and two in Priboj. In the region of Istočna Herzegovina, the Serbians place one reinforcement at Stolac. In Posavina, they place two reinforcements in the key space of Duboj. In Yushna Krajina, one reinforcement is placed in Merkonjicgrad. And the Serbians place their remaining three reinforcements in the region of Sarajevo one in Zhuc, one in the key space of Vogosca, and one in Gornia Slatina. Next, the Croats place reinforcements. One is placed in the region of Srednia Bosna in the key space of Bugoino. In Sapadna Herzegovina, one reinforcement is placed in Sapadni Mostar. Another reinforcement is placed in Yushna Krajina, in the key space of Yaitse. In the region of Tropolie, another reinforcement is placed in the key space of Livno. And finally, in Posavina, the last Croat reinforcement is placed in Derventa. Now the Bosniaks place their reinforcements. They only have two, and both will be placed in the region of Posavina in their key space of Berchko. The next step in the start of turn phase is to deploy foreign units. Foreign units in this game are various voluntary or mercenary units that fought in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And each faction has one or more foreign armies. On the Serbian side, there's the SDG in red, Arkans Tigers. These are very powerful units, especially early in the game. Then there's the SVK in orange. These are military units of a Serbian parastate, Krajina, from neighboring Croatia. And then there's the NOZB in orange-white. These are military units of a Bosniak parastate, Sapadna Bosna, from Sasinska Krajina, which are allied with the Serbs. On the Croatian side, there are early HV units. These are in purple with NATO infantry symbols. Then there's late HV units, which are purple with NATO mechanized symbols. These are excellent units with great firepower and mobility. And finally, on the Bosniak side, there are El Mujahid units. These are volunteers from Muslim countries. These foreign units are deployed by playing a foreign units card for its event. If deployed directly onto the map, the side loses one point 
in foreign attitude because this represents the escalating nature of the conflict by employing mercenaries. The side can also place foreign units in the foreign units box that each side has on the map. In that case, that does not cause the loss of foreign attitude points. So now we go to action rounds and in each action round, a player first checks for supply, then conducts a NATO airstrike against any of uh, the two other factions and then plays one card. And we conduct action rounds in the order indicated by the turn. So for the first turn, it is Serbians followed by Croats and then Bosniaks. First, the Serbians check to see if all their units are in supply. And to have units in supply, they have to be connected by paths of friendly spaces to a Yugoslav space or connected to key spaces in an enclave. And each key space in an enclave can supply three units. Before we conduct the Serbian first round, let's talk about supply. Each unit needs supplies in order to survive and operate at full force. Serbian units are supplied from Yugoslavia, and these are spaces indicated by the label YUG. And they need to have a supply path connecting units through friendly spaces all the way to Yugoslavia. There are spaces with the letters KRA. These spaces can be used as part of a supply path for Serbian units, but these are not sources of supply for the Serbians. They have to trace supply to Yugoslav spaces. Croats need to be connected to spaces in Croatia, CRO, in order to be supplied. Now, Bosniak units need to be connected also to spaces in Croatia to be supplied. And they can always use Croatian spaces, even if they're currently at war with the Croatians. Now, there are situations when units cannot trace a line of supply to one of these spaces outside of Bosnia and Herzegovina. They could still be in supply if they can trace supply to a key space in an enclave. An enclave is territory that is entirely surrounded by the territory of another faction. Let's say that units like the Bosniak units here in Sasinska Krajina are not able to trace a supply to a Croatian space. They can still get supplies from the key space inside this region, which is Bihać. This is a limited source of supply since each key space in an enclave can provide supply for a maximum of three units. If there are more than three units, the excess will be out of supply. If a unit doesn't have a supply path connecting it to a supply source, it is unsupplied. When it becomes unsupplied, the unit is marked with an unsupplied marker with the low supplied side showing. Now, being in this state has no negative effects on a unit, but if the unit stays unsupplied during the next round, the state changes to out of supply, which significantly reduces the unit's performance. The effects of being out of supply are that the units cannot conduct any operations. That is, they can't move, attack, or entrench. They have their combat factor and loss factor reduced by half with fractions rounded up. These units, when defending, cannot avail themselves of combat cards. And these units cannot retreat after an attack they must reduce one step instead. Also, units that are out of supply cannot use strategic redeployment and they cannot be replaced. And finally, when checking for supply, 
If a unit is out of supply, it is flipped to its reduced side. And if already reduced, it is eliminated. Now we go to Serbian round number one and we check for supply. There are Serbian units in an enclave in Krajina and Bosnia. In the enclave, the Serbians have four key spaces. Each key space can provide supply for three units. So a maximum of 12 units can be in supply in the enclave and the Serbians start in the enclave with nine units. Serbian units outside of the enclave are all in supply because they can trace a line of supply to a Yugoslavian space. So all Serbian units are in supply. Next step is to check for NATO bombing. Since no players have reached foreign attitude minus five or minus six, there are no NATO airstrikes to be executed. So we skip this step. Now the Serbians play their card and they play Serbian intervention for the event, receiving two foreign units of the SDG. The Serbians can choose to place them in the foreign units reserve box or to place them immediately on the map at a cost of one foreign added two point. And the Serbians choose to place the units immediately on the map. So one SDG unit is placed in Bielina and the other one in Priboj, both spaces in the region of Semberia. And now we shift foreign attitude minus one to reflect the decline of Serbian international reputation. The Serbians plan to use these elite units to punch through the front line near Berčko and create a corridor that will connect the surrounding western enclave. Now it's the first Croat round. The Croats check for supply and all Croat units are in supply. They can trace supply to spaces in Croatia. There is no NATO airstrike action this round either. So now the Croatians proceed to play a card. They suspect that the Serbians will try to force them out of Posavina. So the Croatians play the Croatian intervention card for the event. The Croatians shift foreign attitude by minus one and they place three HV early brigades, one in Bozanski Brod, one in Derventa, and one in Jajce, in the region of Yushna, Krajina. These units are the professional brigades of the Army of the Republic of Croatia, and these will be needed by the Croatians to stop the Serbian offensive. Now it's the Bosniaks' turn. First, the Bosniak check for supply. Bosniak territory is split into several enclaves, which are disconnected from Croatian supply sources and have to be supplied from key spaces within those enclaves. The Bosniaks check in Sarajevo. Their three spaces can supply up to nine units and they have six units there, so they're good. The Bosniaks also check their enclave in Srebrenica and Sasinska Kraina. These enclaves have enough supplies to be drawn from key spaces for the units there. So all Bosniak units are in supply. And as in the previous round, there is no NATO airstrike action this round. So now the Bosniaks proceed to play a card. The Bosniaks realize that their position is weak, their territory scattered, and that they have a limited amount of units. So the Bosniaks will conserve their forces to play defensively for now, until able to build up strength and go to the offensive. And the Bosniaks play Sarajevo City Hall for the event in order to damage Serbian foreign attitude and to reduce the Serbians' ability for the offensive. And this event shifts Serbian foreign attitude by minus one, and now it is at minus two, one step below sanctions. 
The Serbians check for supply. The units in the enclave are 12, and that's the maximum amount of units that can be supplied there because there's four key spaces. In all other spaces on the board, the Serbians can trace supply to Yugoslavia. So all Serbian units are in supply. There is no NATO airstrikes in this round. The Serbians go to the offensive and play Posavina Corridor Offensive for the event. This event gives the Serbian artillery support two die rolls to try to reduce enemy units and also a plus five die roll modifier during any attack. And finally, the ability to advance after combat one additional space beyond the defending space. The only requirement is that the attacks occur in Posavina. In this game, the attacker, if he vacates the defender's space, can advance into the vacated space only with full strength units. And elite mechanized units can also advance one additional space beyond the defending space. In addition, certain cards like Posavina Corridor Offensive give that ability to all units in the attack. And this ability, of course, is useful in creating breakthroughs. This event gives the Serbian artillery support two die rolls to try to reduce enemy units and also a plus five die roll modifier during any attack. And finally, the ability to advance after combat one additional space beyond the defending space. The only requirement is that the attacks occur in Posavina. Now the Serbians can activate four spaces because the card played has value of four. The Serbians activate Bielina and Priboj, and the units there will attack Perčko. First, the Serbians roll for artillery support, two D10s, and the Serbians need a roll of three through nine to reduce a full strength Bosniak unit. The first roll is an eight, so the defender has to flip one of his full strength units to reduced side. The second roll is a two, and that is a miss. Now to the combat procedure. The Serbians sum the combat factors of all their attacking units, and it is 26. The Serbians roll one D10, and the roll is a three, which is modified with a plus five, because of the Posavina Corridor Offensive card effect for a total of eight. And we cross-reference eight on the combat effectiveness table at the bottom of the map board, and that gives us a multiplier of 1.5. So we multiply the Serbian combat strength of 26 times 1.5 for combat effectiveness, and this results in a loss number of 39, which the Bosniaks will have to absorb. Now the Bosniaks fire back. They have a total combat strength of eight and they roll 1d10 on the combat effectiveness table, but they have a minus two die roll modifier because in the first turn of the game, all Bosniak attack and defenses suffer that penalty. The roll is a nine modified to a seven, which results in a combat effectiveness of 1.5. This is multiplied by the Bosniak strength of eight to produce a loss number of 12. So the Serbians have to absorb 12 loss factors. Now the Bosniaks have to take losses and they have to absorb the loss number of 39. And this is done by reducing or eliminating units. And each time a unit is flipped to its reduced side, it absorbs six loss factors. However, the Bosniaks don't have enough to satisfy 39, so the Bosniaks eliminate their three units. And these are placed in the Bosniak eliminated units box. And because three Bosniak units were eliminated, the Bosniak strategic will score is reduced by three, and the Serbians add three to their score. 
However, the attacking Serbians also have to take losses. They have to absorb 12 loss factors, and they do so by reducing two of their full-strength VRS units in Bielina. The Serbians, however, do not lose any strategic will points since strategic will is lost when you lose a unit and not when a unit is reduced. And now since Vrčko is empty of enemy units, the Serbians can advance into the space. And the Serbians do so and they move one SDG unit from Bielina and one SDG and VRS unit from Priboj. Berčko is now captured and that is indicated by placing a Serbian control marker there. The capture of Berčko gives the Serbians three additional strategic will points and the Bosniaks lose three strategic will points. Because Berčko was captured by the Serbians and it was a key space, the Serbians now lose one foreign attitude point. And this reflects the refugee crisis that they just created. The Serbian foreign attitude score is now at minus three and the Serbians are now subject to sanctions because of limited supply of fuel. This means that from now on the Serbians won't be able to advance after attack beyond the target space and they won't be able to strategically redeploy their forces and all Serbian units now have their movement allowances reduced by one. However, because the card played by the Serbians gives them an advance after attack ability, the card takes precedence over the rules and the Serbians can execute advance after attack, even under sanctions. So the Serbians advance after attack and capture Bozanski Shamak with one SDG unit and Gradachats with one VRS unit and a Serbian control marker is placed in both spaces. The Serbians now activate Doboj and Prnjavor, and from both spaces they attack Derventa. The Serbians are still attacking using the Posavina offensive card, which gives them an artillery preparation before each attack. So now the Serbians roll two dice for artillery support. The first roll is a zero with no effect. The second roll is a two, another miss. The Serbians have a combat strength of 16 and now they roll one die and modify the die roll by plus five for the effect of the Posavina offensive card. The roll is a zero modified to a five, which results in a combat effectiveness of one and a loss number of 16. And now the Croats fire back, and they have a strength of seven. The Croats roll a nine, which results in a times two combat effectiveness, and therefore a loss number of 14. The Serbians reduce two units in Doboj, and the Croats take their losses by reducing both units to their reduced side. If the Croats had suffered two step losses more than the Serbians, then the Croats would have been forced to retreat, but they suffered the same amount of step losses, so the Croats remain in possession of Terventa. The Croats now devise a bold plan, and they plan to attack Prnjavor from Derventa with one additional unit from Bozanski Broad in support. Since Pernjavor is defended with only one Serbian VRS unit, it could fall. And if it does fall, that would reduce Serbian supply capacity in the Western Enclave to just nine units, and this would greatly damage the Serbian position. So, the Croats play Declaration of Herceg Bosna for operations, and this provides them with two ops points. Croats then activate Derventa and Bozanski Broad, and they announce the attack from Derventa will be with two units, plus one additional HV unit from Bozanski Broad. This unit will be moved in preparation for the attack by using the move before attack rule. Let's take a look at that rule. 
The move before attack rule states that units that are activated for an attack may move to adjacent friendly spaces before attacking. And this means that if a space is activated for attack, you can move those units to an adjacent space and then attack. So you don't have to be adjacent to the target. At the moment that you activate units, you can be two spaces away. And this gives you the ability to surprise the enemy on a strategic level. Without this rule, you would have to spend one round to move into position and the next round. Let's calculate combat. The attacker's combat strength is eight. Note that if the Croats roll seven or more, they will have enough to eliminate a Serbian unit and capture Brnjavor. The Croat player rolls the die and the roll is a six. So the loss number is eight, and that is one step loss for the Serbians. The Serbians now roll a seven, which gives them a loss number of six, which is one step loss for the Croats. So one Serbian unit in Pernjavor is reduced, and one Croat HV unit in Derventa is also reduced, and the attack has failed. Now it's the Bosniaks turn to play. The Serbians are still fighting for their supply corridor in the north, and the Croats have just been seriously shaken by recent events. So the Bosniaks choose to replace their forces by playing a no step back card for replacements. For a card value of two, the Bosniaks receive four replacement points, and with these points, they can recreate two eliminated full units, and they do so. They take two eliminated units and place them on their full strength sides in Senitsa in Sredna Bosna and in Sarajevo at Sentar. The Bosniaks are planning to attack the Serbs within Sarajevo to try to relieve the siege. If they can take Grbavica or possibly the airport, then they could connect with the supply sources in Croatia and that would change the balance of power around Sarajevo. The Serbians continue with the offensive and now they will try to hit the Croats in the rear and cut their forces from Croatia. The Serbians play BRS limited offensive for the event, receiving three op points with which they can activate three spaces. First, the Serbians activate Bosanski Shamats and Gradachats for the attack and they will use move before attack to redeploy one VRS brigade from Gradachats to Bosanski Shamats. Then they will use two brigades from Bosanski Shamats to attack Bosanski Brod, hoping to cut the Croatian supply line. This offensive card gives the Serbians one artillery preparation die roll. The roll is a seven and this reduces the Croat unit in Bosanski Brod. Now both players roll for combat. The Serbians have nine combat factors and a plus three die roll modifier. The roll is a two modified to a five, that's a multiplier of times one, causing a loss number of nine. The Croats have two combat factors, and the roll is an 8, which results in a multiplier of 1.5 and a total loss factor of 3. So the Croat unit is eliminated, and the Serbians sustain no losses. Strategic will now shifts plus 1 for the Serbians, minus 1 for the Croatians. The Serbians advance into Bosanski Brod with both units and capture the space. And because it is a key space, now the strategic will increases by three for the Serbians and is reduced by three for the Croatians. And the Serbians also lose one point of foreign attitude and now are at minus four, one step below NATO airstrikes. And the Serbians will have to ease a bit with their aggression, otherwise the foreign powers will turn against them. 
When the Serbians captured Bosanski Brod, they fulfilled the condition for capturing the region of Posavina. The Serbians control all of its three key spaces and they control more spaces than its control value of four. Therefore, the Serbians place their region control marker on Posavina and gain six strategic will points. Continuing with the Serbian round number three, they still have one space to activate. But now the Croat player plays his interrupt card for the event, counterattack. And this card allows a player to attack and recapture spaces that the player has just lost. Interrupt cards can be played when it is your opponent's turn to play, and this way you can temporarily take initiative from the opponent. So by playing the interrupt card, the Croatian player takes initiative and activates Derventa and attacks Serbian units in Bozanski Brod. The Croats have a total combat factor of six, but they have a plus five die roll modifier because of the counter attack card. The roll is a seven modified to a nine. This is a times two modifier that results in 12 loss factors. The Serbians, on the other hand, have nine combat factors with no modification. And their roll is a three, which results in a times one multiplier. So the Serbians cause nine loss factors on the Croatians. One Serbian VRS unit in Bozanski Brod is eliminated, but also one Croat HVO unit is eliminated. Therefore, strategic will remains the same and the Croats failed in their effort to break out. So now we move on to the third Croatian round. The Croats have a very difficult situation in Posavina. Their remaining two units in Derventa do not have a supply link to Croatia. And now, because we check supply for Croatian units, we place a low supply marker on these units. And if they do not re-establish a supply link in the next turn, they will be out of supply. Now, low supply doesn't have any immediate effects on the unit. It's just like a warning. So they have this turn to try to re-establish supply. Now, here is where our playthrough is going to be different from that in the tutorial. In the tutorial, the uh, Croatians play HVO redeployment effort and they play it for the event to conduct strategic redeployment using four strategic redeployment points. And strategic redeployment allows a side to move that side's unit uh, or units, an unlimited number of uh, friendly connected spaces. And in this particular tutorial, the Croat player uh, redeploys one HVO unit in Bugoino to Slavonski Brod in Croatia, as well as one HVO unit in Livno also to Slavonski Brod. So if we follow the tutorial, what's gonna happen is that these two domestic units will be moved by strategic redeployment to Slavonski Brod. And the problem is that this is a foreign space in Croatia. And the only units that can move into foreign spaces are foreign units. In the tutorial, a third unit, the HV unit in Yaitse, also moves to Slavonski Brod, but that is a foreign unit. And foreign units are allowed to move into these foreign spaces. There's only one exception for domestic units. They can only move into foreign spaces if they're retreating into them after combat, but that's not the case. So we will change the play of this card instead of the card being played for strategic redeployment we will play this card for the purpose of providing replacement points. And for that, we use the number in the top left, the ops number, and we multiply it by two. So the Croats play this card in order to receive four replacement points. And with one replacement point, 
a player can bring onto the board one reduced strength previously eliminated unit. So with four replacement points, the Croatians will bring their two previously eliminated domestic units at full strength on the map. One is placed in Livno and the second is placed in Zapadni Mostar. Now it's the Bosniaks third round. They want to take the opportunity to attack the Croats in Srednia Bosna. And the Bosniaks play this card. Bosniak refugee crisis for the event. And according to this card, the Bosniaks can change one key space or three non-key Croatian spaces to Bosniak. And the spaces have to be adjacent to Bosniak spaces at the action's start. And we would relocate Croatian units from those spaces to the nearest connected Croatian key space. And then the Bosniaks can move up to three of their units, spending movement factors from connected spaces into those spaces. And if they capture a key space, then no foreign attitude points are lost. So the Bosniaks select three spaces and these will be three non-key spaces. And those will be Kiseljak, Vitez, and Novi Travnik. We place Bosniak control markers in Novi Travnik and Kiseljak. And let's take a look at the situation in Vitez. There we have one domestic Croatian unit. And according to the instructions in the card, that unit has to be relocated to the nearest Croatian key space. And that is Bugoino. So now we also place a control marker in Vites. And now the Bosniaks move two of their brigades from Zenitsa, spending two movement factors and reaching Novi Travnik. And the remaining brigade in Zenitsa moves into Travnik. And that concludes the Bosniak third round. And note that the Bosniaks, even though they control at least four spaces in Srednia Bosna, do not control the region because they do not control both key spaces. Now we go to Serbian round number four, and the Serbians decide to wait for the Croats to bleed themselves. And uh, the Serbians will replace their depleted units. And they will play this card, Declaration of Republika Srpska, but for replacements. And that gives the Serbians double the amount shown there in the top left corner. So it's four replacement points. So two of the four replacement points are used to bring back that VRS unit in the eliminated uh, unit box. That unit is placed in the key space of Bozanski Brod. And the Serbians still have two more replacement points. And the Serbians will use one of the replacement points to flip the reduced strength unit they have in Perniabor. So that unit is now at full strength. And the Serbians have one replacement point left. And here we see that in Dovoj, the Serbians have two reduced units, so they will flip one of them to full strength. That's the end of the Serbian round. Now we move on to the Croat fourth round. And the Croats have to check for supply. And their two units at Derventa cannot trace supply to any supply source. So we flip the low supply marker to its out of supply side. And now these units have all the penalties associated to being out of supply. They cannot be activated. They can no, not move and other penalties. And if uh, they cannot correct their supply situation in the next uh, Croatian round, then they will lose each one step. And these units are already reduced, so they would be eliminated. Now the Croats play their last card, HVO Takeover. And this is another situation that we will not follow the tutorial because in the tutorial, the Croats use the operational value of the card too to conduct operations and attack with the units that they would have placed in the uh, foreign space in Croatia, which 
is uh, Slovansky Brod, but we saw that they could not move those two domestic units there. So instead, we will play this card for the event. And with this card, the Croatians change two non-key Bosniak spaces to Croat in regions where the Croats control at least one space at the start of the action. Bosnian units are also relocated. See Bosniak units in Savidovici, but uh, that is Sieverna Bosna, and there are no Croatian units in that region, so we cannot take any Bosniak spaces there. However, in Srednia Bosna, there is Croat presence at Bogoino. So the Croats select the non-key spaces of Travnik and Novi Travnik, both in Srednia Bosna. Now the Bosniak units there have to be relocated to the nearest key space, and that is in Senica. So the two Bosniak units at Novi Travnik are placed in Senica, and there's two Bosniak units at Travnik, at least one goes to Senica, and the other has to go to the nearest key space. And that is further south here in Jablanica. And now the Croats can move units in the vicinity of those spaces that have been empty. We place a Croat control marker in Travnik. We don't have to do that for Novi Travnik because the default control there uh, marker is Croat. And the Croats move their HV unit, which is currently in Yaitse, into Travnik, and one of their HVO units in Bugoino moves two spaces to also reach Travnik. And finally, one additional unit from Bugoino occupies Novi Travnik. And that's the end of the Croatian round. Now it's the Bosniaks' turn to play. It's round number four. And uh, of course, during each of these rounds, we check for supply and NATO air attacks. There's, as to NATO air attacks, there has not been any so far. And as to supply, the only situation that uh, involved units not being able to trace supply was that situation that we saw in Derventa. Play this card, UN safe areas established for the event. And with this card, United Nations set a safe zone in Srebrenica. And this is in Semberia. And this uh, somewhat protects the uh, Bosniak units there. If the Serbians or the Croats attack that space and uh, occupy that space, then they will lose three points of foreign attitude instead of one. And the second UN safe area marker is placed in Tuzla, in the region of Soli. Now we move on to Serbian round number five. The Serbians appear to be satisfied with the overall situation. And they decided this time to improve their level of foreign attitude. So they played this card, rapid advance for diplomatic action. And when a player plays a card for diplomatic action, if it is a two or three ops valued card, it increases the foreign attitude level by one. If it is a four valued card, then it increases the foreign attitude level by two. In this case, it's a two card. So the Serbian foreign attitude marker is now moved to the number three box and they are still under level one sanctions. And now it would be the Croatians turn or their round, but they don't have any cards left. So we skip the Croatians from executing their round and we also don't have to check for supply. So. You only check for supply for a side if that side has a card with which to execute that side's round. And in each round, if you have a card, you have to play one card. So we skipped the Croatian round five. 
It's the Bosniaks' turn, and they play international recognition of Bosnia and Herzegovina, and they play it for replacement points. So this card gives them four replacement points. However, the Bosniaks can only use two because they have just one eliminated unit. They don't have any reduced units on the map. So the eliminated unit comes back at full strength and it will be placed at Istochni Mostar. That was the last card for the Bosniaks. The Serbians still have two cards, so they will play two rounds back to back. The Serbians want to eliminate the two surrounded Croatian units in Derventa to finally liberate the Posavina corridor of enemy units. So the Serbians play this card, Slavko Lisica, for operations, and they receive three operation points. And the Serbians will activate Prniavor and Doboj in order to attack the Croats in Derventa. The Serbians have a total of 18 combat factors, while the Croats have only two because their combat strength is halved because they're out of supply. Serbians roll 1d10. The roll is a 5, and that's a multiplier of times 1. And that causes 18 loss factors on the Croats. Croats fire back. We roll 1d10, the roll is an 8, so that's a multiplier of 1.5. Because the strength of the Croats is 2, because they're out of supply, the multiplier results in a loss number of 3. Both Croatian units can absorb at the most 12 loss factors, so they are eliminated and on the Serbian side three loss factors is not enough to flip any of their units so they are ignored and the Serbs advance with their units at Perniavor and occupy Derventa. The elimination of the two Croatian units increases Serbian strategic will by two and decreases Croatian strategic will by two. The Serbs still have one operation point to spend, so they will activate their units in Bielina. Notice that they have two reduced domestic units there, and their movement allowance, because of the sanctions, is three movement points. So they spend their first movement point to reach Berčko, and from there, they will move into the empty enemy space of Srebrenik. And notice that entering an empty enemy control space cost two movement factors. And we place a Serbian control marker in Srebrenik. That's the end of the Serbian sixth round. And as stated before, the Croats have no cards left, so we skip them. And we also skip the Bosniaks, who also don't have any cards left. Now we go to the seventh Serbian round and they will play their last card. The Serbians play VRS redeployment effort for the event so they can conduct strategic redeployment using six strategic redeployment points. First point is used to move one unit from Derventa into Bozanski Brod. The second point is going to be used to move the SDG unit at Berčko over friendly spaces in Posavina and also in Sverna Bosna and finally reaching Yushna Kraina to reach Merkonichkra. Third point is going to be used to move a VRS unit from Doboj through Gradachats and Srebrenik and through Berčko to reach Priboy in the region of Semberia. Fourth point is used to move a VRS unit from Derventa through friendly spaces moving south and uh, continuing through Yusna Kraina into Glamoch. The fifth strategic redeployment 
point is used to move a BRS unit from Stolatz by way of Bilecha and into Gako. And the Serbians will not use their sixth and last strategic redeployment point. And this concludes the Serbian seventh round and the end of action rounds in this turn. So now we would proceed to the end of turn phase, determine winner if it's the last turn, which is not, and we would advance the game turn marker to turn two. But this is where our playthrough and tutorial ends. So that is one full turn of Brotherhood and Unity as it appears in the tutorial with a few changes. You see that this game is not very long. The whole game is four turns, so it can be played easily in one afternoon. Three player game, card driven, uh, some uh, very interesting concepts like uh, the ones involving supply that is either traced to foreign spaces or if not to key spaces in an enclave. So you have uh, a lot of uh, different situations and mini fronts inside Bosnia Herzegovina. In addition, you have the, for the use of foreign units, which are very powerful, but can bring about uh, the wrath of the uh, NATO alliance. And even though we didn't see any uh, NATO airstrikes, the prospect of uh, one side being submitted to them is uh, it's pretty scary because if one side, for example, the Serbians enter in level two uh, intervention level, then the other sides, when the uh, Croats round uh, comes up, they affect uh, two separate attacks on uh, full strength Serbian units. And then the Bosniaks, when they have their round, they do the same. And then the Serbians, uh, before they play their card, they also uh, suffer another uh, two rounds of attacks. So uh, it's uh, six different attacks before the uh, infringing side has a chance to improve the foreign attitude and get out of level two penalties. Also, in this tutorial, we didn't see much action in the Sarajevo insert map, which presents a very... Uh, unique and interesting situation. You have uh, the three key spaces there in the middle of the city controlled by the Bosniaks and they have uh, two units there at the beginning of the game so they are in strength there. The Serbians start surrounding the Bosniaks and the Bosniaks are just a step away from having full supply to their units. They would have to uh, clear a path either through the airport space or uh, maybe the space there at Ilica or some other space, or they could play this card, Sarajevo Tunnel, which for the remainder of the game allows them for the purposes of supply to trace a supply path underneath uh, that airport space. And for that, there's a marker. And it is this tunnel marker and that marker would be placed in the airport space to denote that the Bosniaks have dug a tunnel that goes through that space. And you see there the little box number three that would allow the Bosniaks to draw supply from uh, Trnovo there. And of course, they would have to control Trnovo in order to do that. But at the beginning of the game, the surrounding areas... Uh, of Sarajevo are mostly in Bosnia control. There's a myriad of other events not covered in this tutorial, but I hope that this video has given you a good idea of the flow of the game and what the game has to offer. This is Stuka Joe signing off for now. Thanks for watching.